Juliet's quite a strong character. Um, I was adamant that I didn't want her to be quite the whimsical, romantic kind of Juliet that we're all used to knowing. And I based it on Elizabeth Moss in The Handmaid's Tale. I kind of like was quite attracted to the way she used her face and um, took some inspiration from that. Uh, I play Romeo and uh, he is the son of two political figure type parents from a very cold, unusual upbringing. Not a lot of close interaction with other humans, no sort of romantic relationships, nothing, no close relationship with his parents. So he's a little bit odd at times, but he is dumped in this institute because he is an embarrassment of, of sorts to his parents. And there he meets Juliet and he goes on this incredible journey of discovery of you know what it is to love. I quite like to let the character evolve naturally. Mm. Um, I don't want to be too set in this is how she is, um, which is a lot of Matt's work is like we're so free to just mm. be able to uh, create naturally, which is lovely. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting the journey of the creation of a character. A few points of reference for me were, you know, children of political figures, for example, Donald Trump's son, and just his mannerisms and things like that, little video clips of him and stuff. But um, the character really starts to evolve on its own accord just through working yeah. on movement, working on, you know, working within the context of, of the story that we've mm. sort of got the outline of and it just becomes its own yeah. Entity. When you play a character, I think there is always like a tiny bit of you oh, yeah. in there that comes naturally. I mean, it was such a great uh, creation process, you know, working really closely with our counterparts for six, seven weeks. If it was just you on your own, it's very uh, easy to hit a brick wall pretty quickly. Whether it's just character, whether it's movement, whether it's anything. Uh, so it's always good to have someone to bounce off and, you know, to work together, compromise is a massive thing. You have to be able to really see the benefit of the other person's point of view and you know, and it's, it creates a really amazing uh, relationship between two dancers um, and having sort of parted now. It's a bit strange, you know, you communicate only over text or... Voice or, notes. Yeah, voice notes. <laughs> it's quite yeah. difficult, like, them being now that we're separate yeah. because um, their show is evolving in their own way mm. and it's constantly moving on yeah. so we're we're having in the rehearsal uh, weeks we've suddenly figured something out that then we need to pass on to them and yeah. this is a whole new experience which um, you know I think everyone's just embracing it completely us lot and then you know the young cast and that's really like we're all learning from each other yeah. and yeah. I've never been in this position of you know being like a, a is that a nurturer even mm -hmm. a word <laughs> Um, it's it's, it's yeah, nice to have that kind of responsibility and to know yeah. that you can help give them something. out and give yeah give and it them does it gives confidence. you it makes you take a step back as well from when you first like started out and how mm -hmm. you you would feel like walking into a new company. For me, it's been it was daunting, um, you know, at first. It's a, quite a big responsibility, um, you know. So I sort of felt the pressure a little bit, but. The, to have the freedom that Matthew gives you when you're creating something and when you have, he gives you so much free reign in terms of input and how you want to interpret it. Uh, and that's comforting in a way. I've got to say I didn't anticipate how critical I would be of the work I was doing because it is so much of um, my own. But the rewards are you know, exponential. It's really so, so rewarding to be able to have you know created something you know completely new and fresh, and people seem to like it. So yeah, it's been amazing. I, I'm I am actually like thinking back to how uh, Red Shoes was for me, and you're a little bit younger. It was like you know I think fourth contract. So I was still kind of learning. I'd only done like one principal role before that, so this was my second real principal part. So that was like another. Kind of like oh, okay, um, that that process was amazing for a first time, uh, and then coming to this, 
like Paris. It was quite daunting for me and the whole experience of being with the young cast, you know, you kind of set a standard for yourself that you want to make it real and happening for everyone. And um, I think that's what you naturally do. It, I always have to tell myself it always happens. It all comes together in the end and like the, as well as Paris, like, I always, I was like, oh, I don't like that bit. I'm not feeling that bit. I think it's so hard to love what you do in terms of creating and I think a lot of people find that and so I've discovered that but every single contract's been new which has been really refreshing and hearing the score for the first time because it's all a kind of mashup and reworked and yeah. Terry's done an amazing job on it so you have to come to just listen to the music anyway. Yeah.